Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coach on back order, and we're here in episode number 23 of the Pokemon Silver playthrough. In the last episode, we were in Cyanwood City to pick up the secret potion for Amphi the Ampharos, and while we were there, we decided let's take on Cyanwood City Gym to get ourselves our fifth Pokemon League badge, which you see down below that we do have. Things didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked, however. No spoilers, but feel free to go back and check out the episode. We did lose a Pokemon, and at the time, I said it was because it was a critical hit. Now, in editing the video, I realized there was a bit of irony in the fact that I said that by using Pokemon that have been traded up from blue, we really don't need to grind before gyms. Our training is pretty much enough on screen, and the boosted experience we get from the training is enough to get us on par with the opponents. I really didn't even notice the level of the ace was three levels above the Pokemon we were using. So, unfortunately, yeah, I'm going to say the critical hit probably didn't matter in that case. It probably was just enough power on its own regardless. I really should have switched into a more especially defensive Pokemon, and I can't apologize enough to the Pokemon that we did lose. I'm not saying anything, of course. I have to check that episode out if you haven't seen it, but if you have seen it, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, let's do a team recap, because what we did is we got the secret potion, we came back to Olivine City, gave it to, well, first of all, gave it to Jasmine, who then gave it to Amphi, Amphi is back and lighting up the lighthouse once again, and Jasmine has returned to her gym, and I guess we might as well take it on since we're here. I'm kind of concerned the fact that we were over, or sorry, we were under leveled, the opponent was over leveled back in the last gym, but I think we might have a better chance at this particular gym leader, because I know what Pokemon she uses, so we might have a shot with the team that we have. Starting off, we have Bullwinkle, the can't headbutt things in the Pokemon Center, Bullwinkle, calm down. So, he is our newest addition at level 27, our Tauros from the Safari Zone back in Kanto. He has the Bitterberry item, in case he gets confused, and Headbutt and Stomp, both normal-type moves, but both have a chance to flinch. He also has Rest and Horn Drill, which is also a normal-type move. And his attack stat is 67, but his best speed is speed... His best stat is speed at 71. He's a fast Pokémon for sure. Next, we have the Brain, our Hypno at level 28. Dream Eater, Headbutt, Seismic Toss, and Hypnosis, and he's more on the especially defensive side than anything else. We're not really going to make use of him in this particular battle. Well, his attacks might be useful, but as far as his defensive side, it's going to be more physical stuff we have to worry about as we get into the battle. Next, we have Keaton, our level 28 Heracross, with Horn Attack, Counter, Leer, and Endure. I'm thinking Counter might come in handy, because he has some kind of decent defense. Attack is his best stat, but if he can take a hit from something in here, Counter it back double, that might be just what we need, so he could be a good Pokemon to use in a pinch. Next we have Stinger, our level 28 Beedrill, who we currently have added in the uh, Pokemon Go playthrough. So, kind of spoilers for later on, but we do have a Beedrill in Go, and it is named Stinger in representation of our Kanto raised, sorry, Kanto born, and Kanto slash Johto raised Beedrill. Poison Sting, Twin Needle, String Shot, and Swift, and Attack Stat is his best at 62. Next is Gary, our level 28 Gyarados. He's one thing that's going to be really useful against the Ace, not the other Pokemon that Jasmine's going to be using. Take down, Surf, Dragon Rage, and Bite, and Attack is the highest on the team at 89. Next we have, our last but not least, is Egbert, our Togepi at level 28, holding the Quick Claw to speed him up a little bit. Swift, Metronome, Encore, and Sweet Kiss, and he is more defensive as well, not on the offensive side. So, who do we want to lead with? Now I know there's no trainers in the gym, it is just Jasmine, and her lead Pokemon... I'm going to say probably our best bet is to lead off with the Brain. So we're going to put him at the front. I'm not going to try and make any mistakes. I'm going to... Let's try that again. I'm going to try and not make any mistakes other than that one little uh, speech error that I just did. So wait, what do you say now, sir? Jasmine uses the newly discovered Steel type. I don't know very much about it. And I'm probably going to saying, where's the headset, Professor? Well, I tried to get the audio to record properly using the headset, and I don't know why it will not record at a proper level. It worked the last time, but it will not seem to work this time, so I'm back to using like the regular headphones and putting my video camera up here so I can record my audio and export it as an MP3, but for whatever reason, I really didn't have time to mess with the headset audio right now, because I just got back recently from my second day of Pokemon Go, and I needed to relax for a little bit, thinking I could just easily record this afterwards, but if the audio is going to mess up, it's going to slow things down. So it is currently, let's just take a quick look at the Poke Gear, break the fourth wall, currently 12.18 a.m. on Wednesday, Tuesday night sort of thing, and I really don't have any more time to waste trying to get this stuff working. I just got to record this, so let's get into the battle. Thank you for your help at the lighthouse, but this is different. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Jasmine, a gym leader. 
I use the steel type. Do you know about steel type? I, well, I do now, but in this generation, not so much. It's a type that was only recently discovered. Um, may I begin? Let's both begin. Now, we lost a Pokemon to the last gym leader. I don't want to lose any more Pokemon. Leader Jasmine, I'm gonna send in a Magnemite at level 30. So you are higher than I was expecting, but I don't think there's too much to worry about. I'm going to start with the Hypnosis. Alright, so you're gonna stay asleep. Now, it will resist our Psychic type Dream Eater. But I'm curious, I think that might still put up more damage than Seismic Toss. I don't, or, blah, 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 blah. Seismic Toss will do 28. But let's see how much Dream Eater is going to do. I don't think you're. How good is your special defense? Kind of decent. And you stay asleep, so let's just do the Dream Eater again. And we can then go for a Seismic Toss to finish up. Could have tried Seismic Toss just to give me an idea how much HP this Magnemite has. On the other hand, Dream Eater could critical hit, of course. So, stays asleep. So, as I say, Seismic Toss will finish this Magnemite. Very nicely. First Pokemon down. Not even a hit on us yet. Now, we were lucky that the Hypnosis landed. It's not, of course, fully accurate. So, it is an issue that we might miss against the second Magnemite. But, we're going to do our best. Come on, Brain, you can pull through. Another level 30. It does land. Alright, I'm gonna try the Seismic Toss now. How much HP would this Magmite have at level 30? I'm gonna say it's gonna have more than, uh, what would that be, 56? Doubling our level? It might not. Hang on, let's see how much this will do. Yeah, a little bit more than, uh, 56. It stays asleep, though, so we're going to... We're gonna do the Dream Eater now, and hope for a critical hit just to drop this thing. Let's see what happens. Come on, Brain, put everything into it. Not quite. Even if it wakes up, though, we can go for Seismic Toss, but it stays asleep. Things are looking kind of decent at this point. So we're dropping Magnemite number two, and you might be thinking, well, our third type must obviously, obviously, I can't speak, obviously be Magnemite number three, right? You're wrong about that. In honor of Brock, the first gym leader in Kanto, she has an evolved Onyx, Steelix, level 35. So immediately, now I think this thing's going to be faster, or not. Now what are you going to do to us, Iron Tail? We've got nice defense, and I don't know how much more offense Steelix would get, physical attack. A fairly decent amount. So we're going to go to a defensive Pokemon that resists the Steel-type stab attack. It's going to be Gary, our Gyarados. We can surf this thing in return. Now how much will your Iron Tail do to Gary? It's only 75% accurate too, so we have a chance to dodge this. Okay, that was a critical, and it did 9... 49 damage. Another critical would drop us, so we're going to immediately Super Potion. If we can avoid taking those very powerful critical hits, I would appreciate that. As you're going to try to lower the defense, but you're going to fail, thank you very much. Take this Surf Attack right to the bank and cash it. Alright, come on. If this does half, we're in a good spot, we can go for a second one. Yes, alright, one more surf. Really? How do you have Sunny Day? Anyway, Dragon Rage. This should drop it, I'm going to say. Wait, I don't want to be too confident. Let's just wait and see what happens. Yes! Alright, didn't lose anyone to Jasmine. Excellent, and Brain hits level 29. Gary, you're gonna get some good experience as well. Alright, Jasmine's defeated. You are a better trainer than me, in both skill and kindness. Thank you. In accordance with League rules, I confer upon you this badge. 3500 bucks as well. And, boom! Mineral badge added to the collection down below. Happy we didn't lose anybody. Mineral badge raises Pokemon's defense. Um, please take this too. TM23, that's gonna be Iron Tail, I believe. You could use that TM to teach Iron Tail. Nice. Um, I don't know how to say this, but good luck. So, what I want to do right now, immediately use that Iron Tail. I have an idea for who I want to give this to. We have a Pokemon that currently has nothing but normal type moves. I'm going to replace Stomp with Iron Tail on Bullwinkle Aratoros. In case we have any Rock types come in, he'll have a super effective hit. And if we see any Ghost types as well, he'll at least be able to hit, blah, blah, be able to hit them as well. I'm trying to speak too fast, apparently. I should slow my words down 
so I stopped stumbling over them. Now, we are finished here in Olivine City. Let's go ahead and... I was going to say surf. Let's go ahead and bike on back to Mahogany Town. And do I want to deal with the gym there? Because there's really not much else to do. I could probably go out onto the route and... Wait, do we have any berries? Let me just see. I wonder if we have enough berries to help poor Moo over there in the farm. We have one berry. Let's go back and see if... It's... We already given it two, I believe. We give her a third one that might be just what she needs to get back in healthy working order. It's... Cry is weak. Yes, have the berry. A little healthier. Is that enough? No, Moo is still sick. She needs lots of berries. Alright, well we tried. If we find some more berries, we can go ahead and help out Moo. I don't think anyone else has a berry right now. No, only has the bitter berry. Alright, so, that being the case, is this is a mint berry. That cures sleep. Alright, so we can't use that, unfortunately. I believe it has to be a basic berry to help Moo. But, we did our best for the time being. We can come back later on. But we're just going to head over to, first of all, we're going to stop in Ecritique City and grab ourselves some more items, most notably some more super potions. And then we can go ahead and tackle Mahogany Town. Our Pokemon are now at close to level 28 altogether, so we're going to be on par with that first trainer that we did encounter. So super potions, let's grab another, I want 10 more of these. Hopefully that's going to be enough. And I gotta leave with somebody else. Get to, I think Bullwinkle needs the next level, actually. Yeah, so the first opponent we battled in Mahogany Town Gym, I didn't even heal the brain yet. We'll do that in... No, you know what? I'm not gonna take a chance and forget. I'm gonna heal here while I'm thinking of it. I might forget to do that going into a battle in the gym. But the last time we went into Mahogany Town's gym, we found out the first opponent had a level 28 Dugong, and we're pretty much on par with him right now. In fact... Now that we've taught Iron Tail to Bullwinkle, he might be pretty useful, because Steel is super effective against Ice. And, unfortunately, thanks to Keaton not yet learning a fighting-type move that causes damage, you know, other than counter, we kind of need something super effective. We don't have Fire. And what else is Ice weak to? There's Rock. We have Rock? I don't think we have Rock on the team. But, uh, Fire, Fighting, Ice, Rock. I thought there was something else it's weak to, but I can't think of it offhand. Maybe not. Ground. Nope, that's steel. Anyways, all that being said, I do not know my type matchups, or maybe I do, and I'm just second-guessing myself. We are here in Mahogany Town again. Can we get two badges in one episode? It's possible. I'll freeze your Pokémon so you can't do a thing! Now, it's kind of interesting. All this time, we've had new attacks that come in that can cause paralysis, like Thunder Wave. Well, Thunder Wave was Gen 1. I don't know if it's this generation or if it's Gen 3 that they introduce the... Will-O-Wisp, that causes burn. We have sleep-inducing moves and poison-inducing moves. The only one that we don't have is something that does nothing but cause freeze. We have things that have a chance to freeze, and you would think they would have something at this point in all these generations of something that just inflicts freeze on the opponent, but we do not. Especially now that it is not as broken as it was in Gen 1, and you have a chance to thaw, I think a 1 in 5 chance or 20% chance at the end of each turn to thaw out. Anyway, Bullwinkle is level 28. No attack, but he has some pretty good moves as it is anyway. As we see a Dugong. Now, I could go Iron Tail, but Water resists Steel, so we don't need to do that. We're going to headbutt this Dugong. And I see that we do outlevel this one, so this is looking a little bit better for us. Now, they did lower the attack stat on our Poros. Do I want to switch out? We didn't drop our attack stat again, so I'm going to go stay in, go for the headbutt, and get you a little bit lower there. Another one will drop you. Unless this lowers our attack stat. But it has like a very slim chance to do so. So we're fine. Headbutt away. Depending on what the next Pokemon is, I might switch out because Bullwinkle's getting a little bit into the danger zone as far as his HP goes. He's going to get a level 2 possibly. If he can manage to take this thing out. Now it's only a seal. I think we're probably okay to stay in. Two headbutts should drop the seal. I'm going to. Do we flinch it? Yes we do. Nice flinch attack. Not flinch attack, but flinch side effect of an attack. Down goes Seal, and Bullwinkle should hit level 29 for that. Not, but close though. Ronald's defeated. Darn, I couldn't do a thing. On that last turn at least, you did get flinched out. I think there's a move a Pokemon can use while it's frozen. Which one would that be? I don't know offhand. 
Well, some moves. No, I think I think okay. In this generation, I believe Flame Wheel was the only movie you could use while frozen, and it would thaw you out. Now they've updated that, of course, to include more moves that can do that. So who needs the next level? We're gonna go into Egbert. But yeah, Flame Wheel was a move that could thaw you out if you get frozen. Now here's one of the fun parts of Pokemon: Ice Puzzles. Oh, we get attacked already. This gym has a slippery floor. It's fun, isn't it? But hey, we're not playing games here. I'm playing a game. It's called Pokemon Silver. Perhaps you've heard of it. Now, I do enjoy puzzles like this. A lot of people kind of get frustrated at the ice sliding puzzles. Border Brad wants to battle. But I like them. Especially when I sit back and I look at all the layout of certain little you know, rocks and snowballs and stuff. And have to decide which space to go for. How good are your defenses? But no, I like puzzles like that. Trying to find your way through. I like to sort of map out the route before I even try. Some people do it by trial and error, but I have fun just going, or no, I have I have fun just going for it. No, I have fun trying to map it out beforehand and then seeing if I was right. If not, oh well, I just go back to start and try it again. So, the Swan Up does have Endure. They could stall out one of our Swift PPs, perhaps. And you're not going to freeze us, of course, because that would just be downright mean of you. Thank you. No. You went speed, I thought you went for Endure. Now, you're not going to freeze us, as I said. Thank you. So we get a nice knockout for Egbert, getting him closer to level 29, and gradually closer to his evolution, I'm sure. As another swine up comes in, we just saw Egbert handle that first one. Pretty sure he can handle this one as well. So, once I'm done recording this, just to show how addictive the whole game of... I'm frozen. Just to show how, whole, or how addictive the whole game of... Pokemon Go can be, I'm considering going out just briefly, just outside the house a little bit after this, just to see if there's any Pokemon I can catch immediately before going to bed, because it is fun catching all sorts of Pokemon as you just walk around. Let's go ahead and Horn Attack, we'll just drop the Swino. I thought it might have, well, Critical Hit, okay. I thought maybe a non-critical would have done it. But we got a, we got a thought out Egbert. Border Brad's defeated. Do you see how serious we are? Yeah, you froze my Egbert. Frozen eggs, those are terrible. This gym is great! I love boarding with my Pokémon! So let's go ahead and grab an Ice Heal. Oh, you know what? We have one Ice Berry, I believe. Let's use that. It's going to free up a space in the item bag, of course. Now, you... Is it just a hold item? Oh, no, it's an Ice Self Heal for a burn. Okay. So, there goes that idea. But we do thought out Egbert. I want to go ahead and throw one of our super potions his way, get him back up to full, just in case something leads off that is a little too hard for him to you know, survive a hit from. We're going to go down here and skate up to this trainer. Look how many trainers there are in here. To get to Price, our gym leader, you need to think before you skate. And that's what I was talking about, planning out the map of where to go space to space before you jump in and just go trial and error. Skier rocks in with one Pokemon, level 28 perhaps? We see a Jinx on the opposing side. It is 28. Now, fortunately, your defenses are not super good. So we have a Stab, a Swift Attack for you. Don't freeze us. Come on, Egbert's been frozen once already. You don't want that. It's more powerful Powder Snow you have there. That did 19, it looks like. I'm doing the math properly. No, wait. What am I thinking? That did 21. 42 would be critical. So, we're probably safe to stay in and go for another Swift Attack. Bit of a speed tie happening, it looks like. Alright, that's gonna be more powerful. Well, that was close. But we're gonna switch out into... Probably the brain can handle all this a lot better. He has the most special defense on the team. And I'm not going to risk things like I did back in Cyanwood City Gym. I'm gonna go for my defensive Pokemon, if I can help it. We can always just go for Seismic Toss on this. Look how little that did to our Hypno right now. Alright, Seismic Toss. I could've tried the Headbutt as well, because their defense is low, but our attack isn't that good. So, I don't think we're gonna drop you with one Seismic Toss. If we're lucky, we might. But I did not think so. A Seismic Toss once again, as you put us to sleep. Why don't we have abilities in this generation? Alright, so we have to wake ourselves up. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves the Awakening. We have seven of those. Alright, now, don't get a critical hit on us, please. Or just completely miss. I appreciate that as well. Stop landing your lovely kiss! I could go to somebody fast. Who would that be? Uh, fastest Pokemon I'm going to say is probably Gary. Now, what is your special defense like, though? That is the question. 
Special defense is at 73. You know what? I think you have more than the brain. Let me just take a look here. 73 for Gary. No, 80 for the brain cell. Those ice attacks are neutral to both. I'm going to switch to Gary. I think we're safe to do that. And that he's going to outspeed and go for... We're going to use a super effective bite. As long as he doesn't get critical hit and knocked out or frozen. That would be terrible. Don't do it. Nice. Alright, so bite attack. Down goes the Jinx. That was a little bit of a problem, but we managed to pull through. And experience across the board for everybody. No levels just yet. Skier Roxanne defeated. I wouldn't lose to you in skiing. Probably not. I'm gonna say that right now. If you don't skate with precision, you won't get fired in this gym. Now, I just noticed that she gave us $2,016 for winning. And the other trainer with the level 28 Dugong did the same thing. I'm now wondering... Is it the uh, level of the Pokemon that the trainer uses against you that determines their prize money? Possibly. Now, I do know that other, like, certain classes will give more... What am I trying to heal? Sleep. I know other classes will give more money based on what class they are. Like, in Gen 3, have Rich Boy and Lady that give a lot more, uh, you know, prize money. So, that might be a factor as well. Anyway, so we're going to come to this trainer next. Oh, that's price right there. I know Price is secret. Price has a secret? Well, hopefully you're going to tell us what that is. Border Douglas. You don't, you get three Pokemon, so your level shouldn't be too much to worry about. 24. All right, we can deal with that, I believe. It's too bad we don't have any electric Pokemon on the team. Get some super effective damage off. We don't have electric or grass, so we don't have anything super effective against water types. But we have defensive Pokemon in the form of Gary, of course, resistant to water attacks. Not doing a lot of damage to the shelter, but they can't do a lot back to us either, so I think Egbert might be able to drop this by himself. We're likely going to see Cloyster next, because if this is an ice-type gym, what kind of withdraw is that? You put a little helmet on your head. But since this is an ice-type gym, chances are we're going to see the water and ice-type evolution of shelter coming out of one of these Pokeballs. There was a trainer just earlier that used two Seal and a Dugong. Same kind of thing. Seal is water-type, evolution is water-ice. So Aurora Beam connects against us. It is not stab, of course. Pure water type shelter. Down you go. So we might have time to take on Price in this episode. Now what do we see coming in? There is that cloister. How is the best way to deal with you? I'm gonna switch Egbert out. Let's go into the brain. He does have the best special defense. And we can try to put this thing to sleep. Your defenses are not that good. I'm pretty sure your well your physical is, but I'm pretty sure your special defense is pretty bad. So if we can drop you into Slumberville, we can go ahead and use Dream Eater for some nice powerful damage off. But how much will we do with the Dream Eater? Come on, can we do at least half? If so, even if you wake up, I think Seismic Toss should finish Cloyster. I told you your special defense wasn't that good, right? Alright, excellent work, Brain, and Egbert hits level 29, and the defenses are looking pretty nice. Alright, so last Pokemon is Shelter, I'm gonna say. I believe two Seismic Tosses may be enough. Let's find out all together here. If not, I can try to Headbutt for a Flinch and then Seismic Toss again. No, nope, one more Seismic Toss will drop you. You do confuse us, and normally I would switch out, but I don't think there's much this thing can do to us. So let's just go ahead and try Seismic Toss and break through the confusion, buddy. Ah, it's okay. You can take a little hit there, and... If you want to lower the attack stat, that is fine with me. It's not going to help you, because Seismic Toss does a fixed amount of damage. Come on, break through, buddy. You can do this. Yes, all right. So, on occasion, I don't mind hurting myself in confusion, because it's going to you know, balance the cosmos out and allow me to get some turns where I don't hurt myself like that, as Brain hits level 30. So he's going to be kind of decent against this gym leader to resist the special attack of water and ice, if, of course, he has water type Pokemon. Douglas is defeated. Okay, I'll tell you Price's secret. Yes! I was hoping for this. Let's find out what this big secret is. The secret behind Price's power, he meditates under a waterfall daily to strengthen his mind and body. Just like the Macho card in... Furious Fist, I think? Interesting. Alright, so let's go ahead and maneuver some Pokemon around, because I think Price is all that's left to take on. I'm gonna lead the brain. I'm gonna... Be smart, I'm gonna go back and heal, and let's see if we can get ourselves a second gym badge in one episode. I might be pushing things a little too far, because we were out-leveled by over five in the last gym. 
Maybe I shouldn't do this yet, but there's really nowhere I can train to grind. Because, like, I like to train to get five levels above the wild Pokémon in an area leading into the town, and I'm pretty sure there are no Pokémon at level, say, 30 in the wild in this area. So, I gotta do what I gotta do. So what is the best way to do this puzzle? Now, I said, I don't like to just jump in and roam freely, but you kind of have to because you couldn't see the entire field. So, if I go... Well, I need to get to the one right beside that trainer, to the left, that's spinning around like a crazy person. So that means I need to get to the space right below me. And how will I do that? That doesn't help us. This doesn't help us, but this does. Alright. Or does it? Hmm. Now, I do like these puzzles. They can be tricky, though. But that's no good. Up here... Does that help us at all? Not really. Okay. Bear with me, folks, as I try to remember how to pull this off. I wonder if I can get straight up. Maybe this. Go up here. Is this anything? Yes, it is. Alright, so this can bring us down. We can now go left, go up, and right in front of Price. Alright, this is it. Gym leader number two for one episode. I might be pushing things, but we're going to try. Before I do, I'm going to make sure I reset the recording. Alright, we are up and running. And Pokemon have many experiences in their lives, just like we do. I, too, have seen and suffered much in my life. Since I am your elder, let me show you what I mean. I have been with Pokemon since before you were born. You know... You weren't even programmed by the time I was born. But anyway, that's just uh, getting, all getting all off topic. I do not lose easily. I, Price, the Winter Trainer, the Winter Soldier, shall demonstrate my power. Alright, this is slightly concerning, because as I said, it could be a pretty high level. What's your first Pokemon, Price? Seal. That's not even an Ice type. You're at level 27. Okay, that is doable. We are level 30. So immediately start with the Hypnosis. And that's going to slow us down. I'm pretty sure it always lowers speed. Is your strategy to slow us down and flinch us with headbutts? Well, you apparently didn't slow us down enough because we managed to outspeed that turn. So, I don't know if that means there's a speed tie or not. I'm going to try Dream Eater. If they wake up, it's going to be a kind of a wasted turn. But we are still faster on this turn. So we're going to get some Dream Eater damage off. Lower it quite nicely. And probably Seismic Toss will... Yeah, Seismic Toss will finish it at this point. We healed back all the damage from that Icy Wind, too. Icy Wind doesn't do a lot of damage, but the more useful aspect of it is the fact that it always lowers the opponent's speed when it connects. So speaking of connecting, the Earth has landed upon Seal. Down it goes. Some boosted experience for the brain. He's getting a little bit over level compared to the rest of the team. That means he can sit back and relax in future episodes until the rest of the team gets caught up. Level 29 Dugong. So, we're going to try the Hypnosis. Aurora Beam. We have nice special defense. You're not going to worry about lowering our attack stat. We don't have any physical attacks to hit you with. Down you go into Hypnosis, taking a nap. So we're going to go for the Dream Eater, heal back the damage, and get off a nice stab, Psychic-type move on you. And I might go for the Seismic Tosses now, because there's a chance it'll wake up. Yeah, I'm going to try a couple of Seismic Tosses now. If it wakes up, we'll lose a turn trying to go for Dream Eater. But it stayed asleep. I could have gotten a little bit more Dream Eater damage off. But, I do believe two Seismic Tosses probably will get the KO regardless. How much will this do? Is this going to do half of what you have left? Pretty much equal to half. So that means one more should drop it as it stays asleep for another turn. Much appreciated. Now, I'm pretty sure I know... Uh, I'm pretty sure I know what Price's final Pokemon is. I'm not going to say it, but trust me, I have a, a name in mind. Let's see if I'm right. I was right. Trust me on that. Alright, so Pylos went at level 31. So we're not that much underleveled. We can Hypnosis as you land Blizzard. We have the best special defensive Pokemon on the field right now. If anyone can take this, you can, Brain. And you took it well. Even a critical would only do 60 to us. We're going to stay in and go for another uh, Hypnosis. I'm probably going to switch out to Gary right now and go for Surf. Now, your yeah, Gary's special defense is pretty much on par with the Brain, so we can get the super effective Surf attack off. And I'm sure we can handle a blizzard if it does wake up and connect. Stays asleep. Very much appreciated. Let's start with those super effective surf attacks. 
only we had, first of all, if only uh, water moves could be physical special like they are in current generation, and if we had waterfall on Gary, that would be so much better. But as you see, we do so much damage with a critical surf attack, one-shotting the ace of Price in Mahogany Town, getting some nice boosted experience for both the brain and Gary. Do we learn a new level? Sorry, we learn a new move with this level on Gary the Gyarados? No, we don't, but that is okay. Price is defeated. Looks like the price was wrong. Ha, huh, I am impressed by your prowess. With your strong will, I know you will overcome all life's obstacles. You are worthy of this badge and this cash. And badge number seven? Yes, badge number seven of the Johto region. That badge will raise the special stats of Pokemon. It also lets your Pokemon use Whirlpool to get across real Whirlpools, not fake ones. And this, this is a gift for me. Icy Wind? That TM contains Icy Wind. It inflicts damage and lowers speed. It demonstrates the harshness of winter. When the ice and snow melt, spring arrives. Duh. You and your Pokemon will be able, will be together for many years to come. Cherish your time together. And there I go calling him Duh and I mess up what he's trying to say. Anyway, oh, I'm stuck here, ain't I? Price is something, but you're something else. That was a hot battle that bridged the generation gap. Thanks, I guess. All right, so with that, we're going to head over to the Pokemon Center. Wait a minute. Professor Allen, I haven't spoken to you in, like, years. Chad, how are things going? I called because something weird is happening with the radio broadcasts. They were talking about Team Rocket. Chaz, do you know anything about it? Maybe Team Rocket has returned. <laughs> no, that just can't be true. Sorry to bug you. Take care. Click. Team Rocket is blasting back again. So, we're going to heal up, we're going to save the game, and we all know that the radio broadcasts are focused out of Goldenrod City. It's not a town we have a lot of fond memories in, but we're going to head back there and see what is going on with the nefarious Team Rocket. So we're going to save the game up here. Feel free to leave a comment down below, folks. Let me know what you like in this episode and what you're looking forward to in the future of Pokemon Silver and perhaps future generations as well. So we're getting close to the end of Johto. And feel free to share this video with a friend if you think they would enjoy watching a retro playthrough of the early generations of Pokemon as we await the arrival of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon later this year. Anyway, all that being said, I want to say thank you for checking out today's episode. we got two badges, and I'll catch you next time.